بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمد ونصلي على رسول الكريم أما بعد Many times a person goes into this confusion again asbab how much asbab what asbab there is no clear answer in the sense that each person based on their tawakkul and trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala well they know how much the asbab ghayr yaqeen wali means to rely on asbab yaqeen which has been prescribed by Nabi alayhi salatu was salam But just generally, Marana Yusuf used to say, "Etimad al asbab shirk, yeah, or Turkey asbab kufar." Trusting and relying on these asbab is a form of shirk in ascribing partners to Allah, because you are hundred percent relying on Allah. Now you're not relying on Allah, but you're relying on asbab. That's a form of shirk. You're ascribing partners. to Allah and leaving the asbab the means is kufr because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the asbab so I'll explain a'iddu lahum ma istata'atum if you're living in a jungle and you need to prepare for war and the only thing you have access to is trees and you can make bow and arrows then do that if you're living in a city and you have the best technology money can buy then use that The Sunnah is exhaust yourself what is in your capacity. But your trust in Allah will not decrease or increase based on the amount of asbab you got. So whether you got a broomstick or you got atomic power, it doesn't make a difference. Your reliance on Allah will not move one but. That's why Mawlana Farooq Sahib explains that rewired with Nabi Alayhi Salaam, uh, Isabi questioned him about tying the camel and letting it free or letting it free and tying it. But he said, "Ha, wa tawakkal Allah." No tight and trust in Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So he says we use this hadith for our own consolation, and we use it the opposite way around. So here's a Isabi who got 101 percent yakin and trust in Allah that he doesn't mind leaving his camel, knowing that Allah will protect it. And all control belongs to Allah. Dominion belongs to Allah, and I believe my Allah will look after my conveyance. Now he is told that after having the yakin tied, so this hukam and this instruction is an exam before Muhammad Farooq for great great very long time. This is an examination for great great people. Because you got 100% trust in Allah, now you are told put an electric fence on, tie the lock. Now when you go sleep and there's electric fence, there's a wall around your premises, there's motion sensors, there's CCTV cameras, there's an armed guard. Does your trust in Allah decrease or not? He said we use this now. We got zero percent yakin in tawakkul in Allah. And we use this narration as an excuse to use as Bab. بقول ابن ابن حجر أسفلاني رحمة الله عليه وقد النظر أن الأسباب بعد تهيئة الأسباب means your attention doesn't go to asbab completely after preparing all the asbab. All means all measures. That was in your capacity. You exhausted all of it, but not even zero comma zero 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 one percent of your attention goes to that asbab. Very well, believing and having yakin, whether I had it or not, Allah is the sole protector. Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jalal, you say, "Who is the refuge from the power and the power? Ma asukuni ila Rabbi al-Arbab." That moving your attention from all might, from all power, all other forms of deities in the world, and being contented with Allah and the promises of Allah and the decision of Allah, the Rabb of all Rabbs, being contented with Allah to be your Rabb and knowing that He is there. 
Abu Hayyan Allah la yusay huwa tafidhu al-amri ila man yamliku al-amr. Handing your matters over to the one who controls all matters. The one that's controlling all affairs, controlling all conditions, controlling all halat and situations, hand your matter over to him. So for this, our Mashaykh say we need to sit every day and make muraqaba. One of the muraqabas is on the seventh kalima. Amantu billahi wa malaikatihi wa kutubihi wa rusulihi wa liyawmi al-akhir wa al-qadri khayrihi wa shirrihi min Allah wa al-ba'thi ba'da al-mawt. Did I bring iman in one Allah? So Maulana Yusuf used to explain that I bring iman in one Allah. Our attention should move from all deities, all forms of worship. All ilahs and our attention should turn only to Allah. So a person should make muraqabah and check himself. Any time did my heart go to any other deity besides Allah? La ilaha illallah. Eh Allah, tu sab kuch hai, tumara sab kuch. Meh kuch nahi hu, mera kuch nahi. Allah, you are everything and everything belongs to you. I am nothing and nothing belongs to me. So this heart, does it shift away from Allah or not? We need to check that, number one. If a person's got Allah, he's got everything. The ministers were jealous of ayahs, the king called everybody. He put very expensive ornaments, expensive jewelry, gold, etc. in the royal court and he said, I am giving you one offering now, once in a lifetime. Put your hand on whatever you want and you own it. The ministers were shocked. They said, King, are you kidding with us? He said, no. So they all went for different treasures. Ayaz stood. He never moved. Everybody laughed at him. And then the king asked each one, what did he see value in? And why did he go in that direction? Why did he choose a treasure? Everybody, when they were for completed, laughed at Ayaz and said, Ayaz has achieved nothing. Oh, king, you trusted him. The king asked Ayaz, Ayaz, why didn't you take anything? He said, King, I took it. He said, What did you take? He said, Don't you see my hand on your shoulder? He said, Yes. He said, If I've got the king, I've got everything. If I got the possessions of the king, I don't have anything. You got Allah, you own everything. You control everything. You don't have Allah, you control nothing. You own nothing. When Pius Buzuk was walking, there was a couple going to a wedding, and there were puddles of water. So as they passed each other, the Buzuk's sandal, his foot fell on the puddle and it hit the lady's clothing. She was dressed up and ready for an occasion. And she became upset. She started screaming that you messed my gown, you messed my clothing. The husband got upset. He said, what did you do? And he smacked the Buzruk one. The Buzruk kept quiet, looked down and kept on walking. A few seconds later, the husband fell to the ground. She started screaming. You hit my husband, you hit my husband. You harm my husband, you kill my husband. So the Buzruk smiled and he said, Your friend hit me, so my friend hit him. Your friend hit me, so my friend, my Allah, hit him. So Amen to Billahi. Number one, we have to get that yaqeen. Wa malaikatihi. All systems are controlled by the malaika to the command of Allah. So we need to bring yaqeen in the systems of Allah. Not our agriculture, not our governments, not our banking sector, not our security systems, not our economic politics. Not, not our economic, economic policies, policies, not our stock, stock markets. 
but the unseen system of the Malaika. A family was at the beach and uh, they were playing and the husband says he wants to go into the water. So the son was running after the father and the mother stopped him. And he was crying and she put him on side and said, okay, I'll tell you, I'll tell you. When the father was fine in the water, he said, Ami, I want to go swim in the water. I want to go into the sea. Abba is there. She said, oh, my son, let me teach you something. Your father is insured, you're not insured. Your father is insured, you're not insured. I can lose him, I can't lose you until I insure you. So the systems of the world to move our yakin from all those systems and to move on to the system of the Malaika, what could to be and the knowledge of the world? All knowledge of the world is insignificant compared to the knowledge of Nubuat. Quran kulhe or sab baki ilm juzhe. Quran is complete, it is kamil, the knowledge of the world is kamil, it is complete, and everything else is a juz, a part of it. And juz is tabe tukul. So the coach and the engine. All the coaches follow the engine. The Quran is the engine. All personalities are insignificant except the personalities of Ambiya. And the Imam of Ambiya, if there is a personality I need to follow, is Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. All stars, all idols, all musicians, all sportsters, Every idol on earth is insignificant compared to the best idol, the best personality, Warusulihi. Waliyawmil akhir and the unseen promises. That whatever Allah is promised, have yaqeen in that. Allah is promised, wa yurbi sadaqat. If you give in charity, somebody gave a thousand rand, his account is zero, logic tells you he's losing. He took a thousand rand, he put it in interest, logic tells you he's making money. Allah says, فَأَذَنُوا بِحَرْبٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ You have declared war, your money will be gone and everything else will be consumed with it. And that sadaqah is zero, Allah will increase it in to 700 times. وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَالْقَدْرِ خَيْرِهِ وَالشَّرِهِ مِنَ اللَّهِ And all decisions and conditions from Allah, benefit is from Allah, harm is from Allah, sickness is from Allah, health is from Allah, poverty is from Allah, riches are from Allah, all conditions are from Allah, we need to have that yaqeen. And ba'ath ba'ath al-mawt, that I'm going to be accountable for my life in this world. There's a thing called Judgment Day. That's why every action that we do will have this desire and awareness that I am going to be accountable. All other systems of the world, it holds me accountable. You get an audit from SARS, from the revenue service, that's insignificant, it's a small audit. Your stops, when you're coming from the airport from the green light to a red light, you are concerned that is insignificant. All accountability in the world is small compared to the accountability of Akhirat. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq of making amal. Wa akhiru da'wana anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.